Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Sharon Rogers and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And this is Tune In Tuesday. Every second and fourth Tuesday of the month, I come to you with a special class. Now the class is free to watch, but if you would like the class kit, which will allow you to create two of each of the cards and one of the 3D projects that I'm creating tonight, then simply place an order of $35 or more in my online store and I will send you that class kit for free. If your order is $50 or more, I will also include some embellishments. The class kit does come with a PDF tutorial that I will email you. Now let's get started. We're going to begin by embossing and die cutting all at the same time this piece of Mango Melody cardstock. Mango Melody is on its way out, but I still have at least half a package and you probably have some as well. Now, if you're getting the card kit class, you will receive some Mango Melody in it. I'm going to take the die that cuts out the outline of the fruit and I'm going to put it in here and you'll be able to feel it kind of snap into place. I mean, it doesn't snap into place, but um, sometimes depending on where it is. You, did you hear that little snap? That's what I mean by snap. So we're going to and this is being done on the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo, just on the inside. We're going to put our cardstock in there, and we're going to put this in. Now, when you're running it through the embossing folder, uh, the machine, you want to make sure that you have the spine going through first. And you will need a number one plate. You always need that base plate. And the number four plate because we're using an embossing folder it's always uh, we don't need that number two plate and it's and it's the gray plate that we need because this embossing folder is a 3d embossing folder it's hybrid but it's also 3d which means it's extra thick all right and so now you can see what happened is it not only embossed, but it die cut. Now, I don't think this is an orange. I think this looks like a lemon, so I'm not even gonna use that one. But I am gonna use these pieces. Now, I also want to put in some leaves here. So I will bring in, um, let's see, We let's go ahead and use another bright color, Granny Apple Green. I will need my embossing folder in just a second, but here I have a piece of scrap paper and I was just playing around with some colors, but I have a piece of scrap paper. I'm gonna bring in the leaf stamp that is in this set. So there's one leaf set or stamp that has two leaves on it, but the dies actually come with two leaf dies to cut that out. So you can see them right here, which is great because that, uh, that helps you cut a little bit faster. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and do some flowers as well so let me go ahead and bring in some of the flowers. And I don't know how many I'm going to use, but you can see you have a couple of these as well. You can do these singles, or you can also do this triplet, but each of these will produce three die cut flowers. And I'll bring in my flirty flamingo for that. because I know that flirty goes with the mango. I have to be careful because uh, I'm not sure if I can, I probably can't get that all the way on there. So let me see. Let's find another piece of scrap to use. 
And what I meant was I can't get this on here because if I put this die in here, this one's not gonna fit down here. The die is always bigger than the stamped image. But that's okay because I have plenty of scraps all the time. All right, so let's go ahead and bring back my machine. And this time we're just die cutting. So we will need our machine and we need our base plate number one. And then we need our adapting plate, which is number two. We need a number three, and then we put on our stamped images with the dies. So let's arrange these how they go. I'm not sure if I can get this done without some um, like washi tape or post-it note holding this down or not. We'll see. That looks good. Let's go ahead and put this carefully over the top. And I like to squeeze this as I'm going down, going through. That way it kind of holds those in place, especially if there's any little jump at the beginning. And now you can see like that one. I knew that this one over here might jump a bit, but two of them came out okay, so that's good. Let's see, there's a set of leaves, more leaves, and this. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dies away. All right. So now we're just about ready to start assembly. I am going to bring in a piece this balmy blue colored country gingham designer series paper. And I'm going to cut that the same size as a regular card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll go ahead and bring in my card base. And so it, that's really covering up all of that white card base. All right. Here this to the front. So when our current colors came out this past year, I had provided a link to a color coach at Stampin' Up! And Stampin' Up! now has a new one out, but this will tell you some great combinations. But if you don't have that handy, you can always go to Pinterest and say, hey, Mel um, Mango Melody color combinations, and then you'll be able to find some. I usually put in the word Stampin' Up! Um, because then I'll just give you the Stampin' Up! colors. So let's go ahead and bring these in, see if we can arrange these a certain way. I don't know how we're going to arrange them. Do I want it vertical? Or do I want it horizontal? I kind of like it horizontal, I think. We'll just put some of these leaves around. Just 
just sort of playing around right now. I'm going to do that. And we'll put some of these blossoms. We can put the blossoms near where the leaves are, too. Now I'm going to put a sentiment over here. So I think, I think that's good right there. If you want to bring out this embossing a little bit more, you could sponge a little bit of Mango Melody across the top. I think this looks pretty good just the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere some of this stuff down. I will be putting a couple of these up on dimensionals. Not, not this leaf set though. You don't want everything up on dimensionals. There's that. I'm gonna go ahead and now this has a little bit of a nub at the end, which you know oranges sometimes do as well, but I'm still gonna cover it up because it reminds me more of a lemon. And this is gonna go up on dimensionals. And this one will go up on dimensionals. Now, where am I putting this? I think, I think I'll put it right, right about here. Now, if it were overlapping this, I would only want to put the dimensional over here. I wouldn't want to put it up here because then it would be lopsided. But I'm not going to overlap them on this one. I do on a later card. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put that right here. I'm gonna put my sentiment right right through here. And so I think before I do anything else, I'm gonna get my sentiment out so that I know how to arrange the rest of my die cuts. I'm going to bring in this piece of basic black cardstock that I pulled out of my scrap folder. And I have a bunch of them, and this happens to be the perfect width. So when you're cutting off those half inch pieces, don't throw them away because you probably can use them on another project. They make um, great pieces for sentiment layers, especially those skinny one line sentiments. Bring in my embossing tray. I have a couple of Versamark pads. I don't need them both. So this is my embossing toolkit. I'm gonna to go ahead and put some of my embossing buddy over the top. That will remove some of the oils that my fingers may have put on there. Um, also um, remove any other moisture and kind of helps with the static quality. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a long stamp block. And this image says, enjoy the sweeter things in life. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down, pick it up. Go ahead and ink it up with Versamark. That looks pretty good, I think. Bring in our basic white powder. This is from the basics bundle of powders. My white is getting low. This will still last quite a while, but my white is getting low. I do need to replace it pretty soon. I was kind of hoping that they would unbundle all of those. I don't need the black and I don't need the clear. But, I mean, I've had this bottle forever. You could tell by the 
logo on it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to heat it up. And when it starts to turn bright and shiny, then you move along. Now, my heat tool just got turned on, so it's going to take it a bit to heat up itself. Now I can see it coming alive. I'm just going to move it on down. You don't want to overheat because you will lose the raised quality of the image. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and angle cut this. Try to get roughly the same angle on it. All right, let's go ahead and bring back my card. Uh, so see how that looks in there, that looks nice. Now notice how this end is over this raised portion. I only need my dimensionals behind here, this part here that's not over the orange part. Let's go ahead and bring in those dimensionals again. We can bring in our other pieces here to see where they should go. And we could stick some of them, some of them a little bit under and some of them over. Just kind of personal preference. Just play with it until you get it the way you want it. Probably we would want another one over here. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good, I think. So let's go ahead. If you want, you can put a little bit of glue under here, but it really just stays laid down right like that. So this one, I think I am going to instead put that right underneath. Put this one right underneath here a little bit and stick down anything else that's not stuck down. Okay. And one more. There we go. Now all we need to do is bling it up a little bit. Okay, I can bring in some opal rounds. Let's see. I know I have my take your pick tool. I put it away, so I have it again. Let's see. Is that That's kind of big for those little guys, though. So let's go ahead and we can put that one there. And what do we want for the centers of the little flowers? Um, you know, I can go ahead and bring in these pearl basics. Now, with these little pearls, which are also on their way out, um, you can color them with the blends. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in... I'm going to bring in, I think, a pumpkin pie. I don't have Mango Melody in the blends because they don't make that. But if we go ahead and just use the pumpkin pie, it'll be good and close enough. Might even want to use the lighter one. I think the lighter one's a little too light, though. Because I just colored them, I really should give them just a little bit of time to dry. I'm going to go ahead and bring the spatula end in here. I 
actually they dry now. I don't often use the spatula end, but it does work nicely. Rhinestones would look great in here as well. You know what? I think I like these this pop of color in the center better than I like it um, with the opal round. So I'm going to take that opal round off, stick it back on its paper, and I'm going to come in and color one of the larger pearls. And I'm just being very gentle so I don't ruin ruin the tip here. If you're a painter, you know that you have to treat the tips of brushes nicely. Well, there we go. Look at that card. Isn't that cute? And so then you can have a happy birthday inside or whatever sentiment fits the occasion that you're going to be sending this for. Card number one. All right, so I was chatting with one of my team members. She was telling me what she had done this weekend and I was telling her what I was doing and I showed her the cards and she said, how about brushing some of the ink on here, which I could have done, yes. We talked about that, but she also talked about maybe painting a little bit of this white on that we had done. Um, remember a while back we had calming camellias and we did this whitewashed technique. So if you do that around here, it looks a little bit more like the rind. I think I need a little bit of white. I'm about to make is one that I last ate as a young child. I do not like this fruit, but I know many people do, and I probably should give it another chance. However, I'm not going to, and that is the grapefruit. I'm going to start with Daffodil Delight, and I will ink up my image, and then I'm going to bring in, because um, the outside of a grapefruit is kind of a pinky yellow. I mean, I know it depends on which kind of grapefruit you get. But I'm going to come in here with the um, Flirty Flamingo and just add a little bit of pink to it with a sponge dauber. I am not worried about this little piece right here because that's not going to come into play at all with what I'm making. Now let's go ahead and just press that to my basic white. And now you can see it's got a little bit more of a pink tint. And as I recall grapefruits, they weren't a solid uniform color everywhere. So it's nice that there are some areas that are a little bit more pink than others. So that's how you can make more colors with just your regular Stampin' Up! colors. I'm going to bring my flirty flamingo in and I need to bring in the fruit pieces that go on the inside. And that is one stamp. I'm not sure why this one has this fourth piece added other than the fact that it, I think it's supposed to represent, you know, like a baby lemon or lime and it's the outside and so these other pieces are the rinds as well rinds yeah is that the right word i think so i think i'm gonna have to take this one off my block because i need a big block so we'll clean this I 
All right. So now we have the pulpy part of our fruit. And we will align this. All right. So we have our grapefruit. Now let's go ahead and bring in, um, we, you know what, we might as well stamp the leaves while we're here. I'll go ahead and grab the leaves. And I'm not sure how many of these I'll be using. So let's just stamp it a couple times. This is Garden Green. I think that's a great green for citrus leaves. And now let's go ahead and bring in our other pieces to our hybrid folder. So this is a hybrid embossing folder, which means it can die cut and emboss at the same time. You can tell that the order that I'm doing this video in, it's my least favorite fruit when I'm filming because I just opened this package and everything is coming unstuck for the very first time. So here are the dies that you get. So the little flowers to I get out the flowers we've got some leaves and look there's two sets of leaves so I can do that in one pass and I can do this in one pass as well I'm just gonna put this on here and then we can put our leaves down and that's just one pass of the embossing machine okay so I have my die adhered with a little piece of washi tape to my stamped images. I'm going to bring in my embossing folder. Now remember, this is a hybrid folder. It is specially made to take the dies as well. With the stampin' side up, that's where I'm popping in my, oops, this moved. Hold on, I think I need another piece of washi tape. Okay, we can do that. All right. We're gonna put this into the folder and I can see, um, it may be hard for you to see on camera, but I can kind of see where the dies go. And I'm just gonna move them around till they click right in. So they look like they're clicked in right there. And now I'm gonna run this through. You need your number one plate and your hybrid embossing folder, spine going through first. And we're going to run this through. And when we take this out, right, what has happened is it has embossed and die cut these pieces all at the same time. We got a little piece of washi tape stuck here. Okay, there we go. So I'm not sure if you can tell that it's embossed or not, but it is. So I have those three pieces. All right. Now I want to go ahead and bring in um, the dies again and get my leaves out, which I already got out. Oh yeah, here they are right here. Go ahead, bring in this. I don't need that. Let me use my washi tape. And we just arrange this. That's good.
Uh, this looks like a nice little lemon piece. I can save that for maybe the inside of the card. Although I'm doing a grapefruit card, so why would I want to do that? I'll have to use it on a lemon card in the future. All right, so we're going to run this through. Now, this is just dies now. We're not using the embossing folder on the leaves. So we will need our number one plate and our number two plate. We will need a cutting plate, which is a number three plate. Then we put down, actually, I'm going to put down the yuckier one. I use this one for the top. I'm about ready to retire my really beat up cutting plate, but I think I can get a little bit more out of it still. It looks really bad, but it works just great. We'll take this off. Set this aside so we don't lose those. All right, get my plates out of the way. So now we have these three pieces that we can arrange on a card. We can maybe put some greenery in here. Um, it will just, you know, accent what's going on. We need to put this on something. I'm going to bring in a piece of Flirty Flamingo that is five and a half by eight and a half, cut and scored, I mean scored and folded at four and a quarter. I'll be mounting on this piece of garden green that measures four by five and a quarter. You don't need a lot of glue. Just a very thin line. In fact, the more glue you use, the more you'll probably fo um, find some buckling because of the moisture. So you just want to use a little bit and then you wanna really make sure it's firmly down there, spreading it out with your fingers. You know how you, when you squish it, it just kind of spreads. That's what you're going for. So now I have a piece that is cut slightly smaller than the garden green. So this is going to measure three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So three and seven eighths is two little marks on your cutter, less than four inches, and five and one eighth is two little marks more than five inches. I'm going to emboss this, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment. And I have chosen sending you a big squeeze. And let's see, I'm gonna put that right about here, I think. Right in the lower right-hand corner. All right. Um, I will be arranging my fruit, you know, something like, something like this. Let's see. Probably something like that. We're going to bring in our embossing machine again. We need our number one plate. And we will be embossing, just embossing. So we'll put that in our folder. Remember, spine side through first. And then our gray plate. If you are still using the Big Shot from way back when, when Stampin' Up! sold the Big Shot, this gray plate does work with the Big Shot. It's the same as another plate um, that we had. I think it was blue. We were kind of switching over machines when um, the, the 3D embossing folders came out. So here we have that. And you can see we can put this right down on here. And you can see that the text reads just fine, even though it's been embossed. You can't really stamp well over embossing. The ink is just not gonna settle into the nooks and crannies. So you do want to stamp first. All 
All right, so we'll just add a little bit of glue here. Okay, and again, we're making sure that's down securely. I'm gonna bring in my elements and let's see. I've already put some dimensionals on these guys. So I just need to kind of figure out how I want them to go. And I don't want dimensionals on all of them. So I don't think I'll put a dimensional on here, but I do want a leaf sticking out down here. So I need to adhere that first. I'm going to, I'm going to make it one with this piece. We'll adhere it like that. I just want to make sure I have enough space when I'm adhering it on my card. So here we have something that looks like that. And do something like that. And now that because this one's up on a dimensional, I can sneak this through here. And I just need to figure out how I want that to go. I think like that. So we'll go right like that. And there we have a card. The only thing that's really missing now is a little bit of bling. Well, let's see what we can pull in here. Let's see, I have these, the pastel adhesive back sequins. Let's go ahead and the pinks don't quite go, um, but gold goes with everything. Let's go ahead and bring in our take your pick tool. Let's see. Got this. That you got certainly a lot of sequins here. So where are we gonna put them all? There, and I think another one way down here maybe. It's a period to the sentence. Now what we need to do is finish off the inside. And I think we need some sort of image down here. So I'm going to bring in these little flowers um, for my image in inside only because the more solid image, these are sets of threes and I could set them apart. I could die cut and set them apart, but I think I'm just going to use the flowers instead. Go ahead and get the trio of flowers out. Here's my trio of flowers. And we'll put those in Flirty Flamingo. And also in here, you've got a little bit of a center, but these centers um, kind of go for inside the fruit too. I kind of forgot about that when I was stamping these, didn't I? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it work. I am. I'm gonna get my little block out. I'm going to go back to the front. I'm going to take this little teeny tiny center. Just pop it right in there. I'm going to keep this one, though, fine and blank the way it is. And just get a little bit on this one. All right, that's all right. And then when I go inside here, I've got a little flower center. 
Oh, I meant to do that in yellow. Hmm. hmm. Let's see if we can kind of make it an okay mistake. Clean my stamp. Let's come back in and go over the top. I'll make it a little bit more orangey. We'll make these yellow. All right. Grapefruit starts as flowers too. Can't have fruit without a flower. Pretty sure about that. But do not take any kind of gardening advice from me because I don't garden and things don't stay alive in my presence. So there we go. There is a grapefruit card. And as far as I'm concerned, the best grapefruit I've ever had. All right, let's work on some limes, a fruit that we have not touched yet upon. And I'm going to bring out the Parakeet Party and the Granny Apple Green. And I think these will have just enough contrast for us. I'm not going to be die cutting, but I will be embossing after I stamp. So it is important to know the orientation in this folder. I want my piece of paper to fit in here like this. And I can see, and I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but the whole lime is pointing up towards that corner. So when I stamp it here, that's what I want to have happen as well. I'm gonna begin with my darker color because the darker color is on the outside. And remember what I said, I want, this is a big stamp, I want my lime to go up into that corner. Oh, I just kind of dropped it on my paper, but let's see if it worked. Yep, it did. All right, so I have that outside stamp, and that does definitely look limey, doesn't it? I'm going to bring in my Parakeet Party and ink that up for the pulp part of the fruit. I have the cat hair sticking around there. And we will orient this onto it. Looks about right. Oh, doesn't that look nice and limey? I recently tried some lime flavored chips. I love salt and vinegar and I thought, oh, maybe I'll like lime flavored chips. And I did, but they took me a little bit to get used to. So now we're gonna bring this back in. I'm gonna try to line this up as best I can. It might not line up perfectly when I'm running this through, just do your best. You can see the outlines. So that looks good. Bring in my embossing full, uh, machine. Bring in my plates, number one. And because we are embossing a thick folder, spine first, we're gonna put, I'm gonna angle that a little bit so it doesn't go through so hard. take this out we've got some plain embossed images but we've also got this that looks embossed and it really looks like um, that's popping right out that pulp is popping right out so now what we need to do is um, we need to make a card out of this you'll have to decide how you want it oriented I think I'm going to use a, I believe this is Granny Apple Green. No, this might be, 
this might be Parakeet Party. I think this is Granny Apple Green, though. It's kind of in between these two colors. Sometimes the ink is a little darker. Um, it will probably lighten up a little bit as it dries. You can kind of see it doing so here. I need something to make this pop a little bit, so I think I want a layer of black. We'll just come in here, and we will... This layer right here was three quarters of an inch off from the normal dimension, so it was three and three, three and a half by four and three quarters. So I'm gonna make this three and three quarters by five. I know I was probably off camera a little bit cutting that. Limited space here. A lot of times when I'm using just a pop of color, I like it to be quite a bit smaller. Um, in fact, I do want this a little bit smaller. I think I only want it an eighth of an inch bigger than the layer I'm trying to make pop off the page. So I want to cut this down. And the directions again are right from start to finish in my tutorial. So this is going to be three and five eighths, which is just two little marks beyond the three and a half. And then it's going to be four and seven eighths, which are is two little marks before the five. <laughs> Can't get my scrap out. All right, that should be better. And so now you can see how this is just a little teeny tiny bit. So it just makes that pop right off. And I still haven't decided the orientation of my card when it's finished. And honestly, I don't need to right now. Feels like this needs a little bit of something else. So let's go ahead and we're going to bring in the flowers in just a second because they're very easy to add. I don't think I'm going to add any leaves though. All right. Um, let's go ahead and pop this off the page with some dimensionals. Okay. I think I want the cut ones definitely down here. All right now, you probably saw me just flip this over, and why did I do that? Because if I, um, it's going to be hard for you to tell but I can see the back edge just slightly peeking out from the front edge. So I wanna make sure that doesn't happen. So I flipped it over so that the longer edge is now on the front of the card. All right, so there we have that. And as I mentioned, we'll add in some flowers. And what color are we gonna do that with? I think white still. So we'll need a scrap of white. Bring in some scraps of white. And I'm going to die cut these first. So let's actually just get a bunch out here. We can even get the, the singles out because I can always put some on the inside if I have too many. All right, will that fit? I'm not sure if that'll fit. Let's see. Can we get these on these little scraps? Yes, we can. We can squeak these on. I'm taking a lot of time to line them up here when I'm just gonna have to pick them up and reline them back up. So 
now because we're die cutting, we're going to use plate number one and number two. And we're going to use one of the number three plates, the cutting plates. Arrange these. See if I can figure out how I arranged them before. That's probably good. And then we need a top number three plate. We are going to need to add something to these flowers to make them look a little bit more like flowers. So let's get my plates out of the way first. So for the centers of these flowers, you can actually see they there are a couple of centers in here that we can use. Probably um, it's you know this this little tiny one that's got two on it is really meant to um, do the centers of the stamped flowers here. So those two, but I wasn't stamping. So when we ink these up, and I'm gonna ink in, uh, let's go with Daffodil Delight. I'm just gonna ink one of them and put that in the center of the flower. So now it looks like a blossom. And then for the larger one, I'll use the larger dots and do the same thing. There we go. All right. Let's close up our ink pad. Let's bring these back in. And these flowers are very flat. So what we can do is we can take our bone folder and just take the edges and curl them up. So they have a little bit more dimension to them. You can just do this with your fingers too. So I would probably put these down here somewhere. Now I do need a sentiment still. So before I go ahead and arrange my flowers, let's go ahead and figure out what sentiment I want. Um, let's go with have a zesty birthday. It's a little bit of a weird sentiment, but that's all right. Remember the best way to apply your sentiment to the block, especially when it's long and skinny, is to put it down and then mount it. And we're gonna need a, a colored piece of cardstock here. And I think what I wanna use is some of this color. So the Parakeet Party. And I'm going to bring in a piece of the Parakeet Party Designer Series paper. I actually have this smaller piece left over. I'm going to see if I can incorporate that. Let me go ahead and get out my black ink. Let's bring in our Memento Black. We're going to just stamp on this patterned piece here. I'm 
And there we go. Have a zesty birthday. And we can... Now, this needs to be set off, I think, a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to angle cut this, which is very in right now, I have to say. We're going to angle cut that, but we're also going to take a piece of basic black and we're going to not, not um, have it extend the whole way. We're just going to give it... A, a little bit of an accent, I think. So we're just gonna have it stick underneath a little bit. So how are we gonna have that go? Let's just try this. You can see I'm measuring very carefully. All right, so we can just have that. We can have it do something like that. Yeah, let's do that. Just play in here. That's what we do as friends. We just play in. So here this. Again, this was just a piece of basic black scrap that I had. And we need something to go underneath that. And I think I have just thing. We have some in color twine, baker's twine. And in the in colors baker's twine, there happens to be the parakeet party. So let's go ahead and just take a, a bunch of this off. And what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of, this will go underneath here, kind of, kind of do something like this. And then we will put this over it and then kind of arrange it as we need to. All right. Or we could make a bow out of it. Let's go ahead and make a bow out of it. See how that goes. And it's a big loopy bow because it's going to be seen from behind. So we want our loops to be fairly big. can just arrange it something like this. Yeah, that looks good, I think. Right, so I know I'll have to trim the ends a little bit. And we'll just pop this up on dimensionals. So if I can carefully take that off for the time being, while I grab my dimensionals, I'm going to put some dimensionals, probably more than I normally would, across the back here because it's going to be holding down my bow. And we have something that looks just like that. And we can add a couple of flowers. Oh, where's my ones that I, that I curled already? Uh, Right here, I think. So we can add a couple of these as some embellishments. And I didn't curl this one, but see, you can do it with your hands too. And I probably need a couple of those. I'm gonna bring this back in here. You can even layer these on top of each other if you wanted to. I don't think I want to though. So here we have, uh, that one's probably gonna go there like that. And then we'll have the other one. Let's come down here. Just a little something that's different in color. I'm gonna go ahead and put a dimensional on the back of this one. Okay, and I'm gonna glue this one and I just want the glue in the center because I want those ends to be free to pop up and 
And I'm just going to glue this one down as well. And there we have a fun little card. Now we do need to decorate the inside. So here we have um, a layer that we can put inside and we can either just, we can put some of these flowers that we have left over inside or even though, even though this is one big stamp, we can treat it as just a separate stamp. And in fact, to help make sure that I'm not stamping what I don't want to, I'm going to just layer that onto this block here. And let's see, this is the outside, so we definitely want to use the garden green. I'm going to try to keep the rest of it out of my ink pad. There we go. And I'm not bothered at all that this is a little bit lighter down here because fruit is variegated in color a bit. So we could just arrange some flowers around here too if we wanted to. I don't really want to cover that up, but maybe I just, maybe I just do this. Something very simple. And you can find a greeting from another greeting set um, for an inside sentiment if you want, or you can just write your note. It will depend who I'm sending this to as to what I want to put inside. So now that I'm finishing this up, let's see, we have done an orange and we've done grapefruit, and now we've done lime. What's next? That's right, lemon's coming up next. We are going to bring in for our next project a piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock, and we want to Cut it at two and three quarters. This one was almost two and three quarters. It was a little bit long, wider. By 11. So, uh, nope, we want it by 10. So two and three quarters by 10. So we just need to cut an inch off the other length. You can get three of these from one sheet of cardstock. Now that I've got it cut, I want to score it at two inches. and then at seven inches. What we are making is a water bottle hanger. I'll show you in just a second. So this was the two inch mark. We're going to mount and fold that, and then we're going to valley fold along the one that was the seven inch mark. So we're creating something that looks like this. We will be adhering this part down, but before we do anything else, let's go ahead and stamp. Now this is the part of this um, project that's going to show. Let's go ahead. I don't want to adhere it first, only because sometimes the thickness of the tear and tape can interfere with stamping. So we're going to just ink up the fruity part here and stamp all over my project. And any place that you think needs to be filled in, there's this nice little slice here that can kind of do that for you. All right. So now we want to create the hanger part of it. We'll bring in some tear and tape. And I do prefer tear and tape simply because it's a very strong adhesive and it's rather thin. The 
alternative to this, in my opinion, is not Seal Plus. That's very sticky, but it's a wider strip. The alternative for me, I think, would be the Tombow glue. You know, the green glue stuff. All right, I wanna make sure that that's down nicely. I'm gonna take off the adhesive backing. I'm gonna fold this up. And I'm gonna burnish this just to make sure I've got a good seal there. Um, now up at the top, I need to create a hole because this is hanging off a water bottle. So I need a hole here. So you need to bring out either um, a one to one and a quarter inch circle die, or if you have a one inch or one and a quarter inch punch, then you can do that. This is an old whale's tail, what they call a whale's tail um, punch from Stampin' Up. We do not carry this anymore but it sounds like, or it seems like, Stampin' Up! is bringing back some of the punches for circles because they're so fast and easy. And I would not be surprised if you see a one inch punch or one and a quarter, one and a half pretty soon in this style of punch. So we have this hole at the top. Go ahead and take your scissors and from not right on this score line, but just above it, maybe a quarter to a third of an inch, you're going to cut on an angle up. All right, we're going to insert, this is just a little lemonade packet. It's meant to be added to a bottle of water. So I would put this in here and then because this has this opening, you can kind of manipulate that and so it hangs off your water bottle. Now we just need to decorate this. So let's go ahead and bring in a piece of basic white scrap. All right, here I have one and we're going to stamp let's see. I don't think I want all of it. I just I just want the lemon, the whole lemon. Um, let me see if I can find my, I want the whole lemon and I want this uh, lemon slice, I think. I think that's all I need. Um, just in case, let's go ahead and do the half lemon as well. I don't, I know I don't need this whole, whole half slice, whole half slice. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna bring in my Daffodil Delight ink. Of course, you know what? It doesn't hurt to ink up the whole thing. In case you wanna use the other part somewhere else. So I guess we can do that. All right, so there we go. And now I'm going to bring in the flesh. Now the flesh of the lemon is usually fairly light. So I could stamp, I could ink in this and stamp off, but I think I'm going to try this new color, which is called Lemon Lolly. And it debuts in May with the new catalog. And let's go ahead and see if we can line this up. Now, when I'm lining this up, this little slice here, I want this to come across the very top. Now, I don't want this bottom half to go right against here because you, there's usually a little bit of a gap. There's that thickness of the rind that has that pith in it, the white bitter stuff. So I line this right up across the top and I wanna make sure my rest of my lemons line up okay. I think that's gonna be all right. All right, so there we have, and it's quite a bit lighter inside, just like a real lemon. And of course I do need some leaves as well. So I'm going to bring in, let's go with Granny Apple Green. And there we go. 
Bring in our dies. It's my computer coming alive. I don't I didn't touch anything. But it just has a mind of its own sometimes. Uh, I gotta get this lined up the way it's supposed to be. Alright. And let's go ahead and bring in my leaf die. That looks pretty good. Bring in our machine. We need a plate one, two, and three. And then we need a top plate as well, which my top plate is over here. And run this through. Pieces out. Put our dies back on the mat so we don't lose them. All right. Now let's see how we want to arrange them. I'm going to take this off my bottle for just a second. Let's see how we want to arrange them. I don't think I want that one. I think that's too big. Let's see, I could do, I could do my lemon here. Could just do that. This to me looks a little odd because it's so big compared to the whole lemon that's here. I guess I could do something like that, but I don't really like that, I don't think. Let's do this. Let's do something like this. There we go. And now this particular set does not have anything that says something like for you or, you know, to and from. So I probably will not, um, you know, I'm not gonna use thanks a bunch. This is just gonna be for something at a party and. Um, maybe you want to make sure everybody gets one. And so you could put their name there, or you could find a punch or a stamp that says, you know, to you. But you could just write the recipient's name here as well. That way everybody knows which one is theirs if they leave it, which happens a lot. I anticipate that happening at my Bunko event that is coming up. By the way, if you are local, to me and you have not yet registered for my Bunko Bash which is a new catalog launch as well then you want to do so as soon as possible the deadline for that is this coming Saturday so I can get prepped make sure I have enough supplies for everyone I'm gonna go ahead and just get a couple of dimensional pieces here. Pop this off. And there we have a fun little treat for somebody at a, a backyard barbecue or, you know, or a Stampin' event that's coming up. Hope you liked it. And here's an alternate look if you wanted to just use the whole lemons. Easy peasy, just have to die cut, a, die cut three of them and a couple sets of leaves. I'm so glad you were able to join me tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's projects as much as I enjoyed creating them for you. 
Now come on back to my YouTube channel on Friday, April 28th at 7.30 p.m. and I'm going to create a fifth project using the Sweet Citrus Bundle. It will incorporate one kind of fruit that we used tonight, but also a different kind of fruit that you might not even consider a fruit. The two types of fruit go together very well and a certain song even comes to mind when you think of them together. If you think you know what those two fruit are and what the song is, go ahead and put a comment in the comment section. We'll see if you're right on Friday. Have a great rest of your week.